What's up, everybody? Welcome to Flux Harmonica. I'm David Wilson, and today we're back with another day full of uh, live streaming, of uh, live coding, of all things live. Uh, we're going to be starting up a new project today, which I'm really excited about. And um, basically, the idea is that we're going to try to set up the code base for a new game project and get something like a sprite or whatever rendering to the screen. We're trying to, going to try to do it as fast as possible. I'm going to try to take some of the code we've been using in other projects and put it together in a way that we can use to to get a game engine started. So it's gonna be a lot of fun, I think. I'd like to say hello to uh, to Luis and to Jackson. Thank you both for being here. Um, let me dial down this music for a second here. I'm not so crazy about people talking while I'm trying to talk at the same time. All right, so uh, updates for today. So I did manage to get uh, tail call optimization or elimination um, and tail recursion and named let working in the engine this morning which is super exciting to me. Um, maybe I'll go through a little bit of what that entailed, but uh, the short of the story is that I, the way I was thinking about it was wrong, and I just went and looked at what the scheme um, language spec says to do, and they laid it out very clearly, so I basically just follow what scheme does, and it worked out great, so I'm really excited to have that in. And uh, I'll also say that uh, unit testing is extremely, extremely worth it in any kind of project that you're working on. Um, I didn't have unit tests going into this effort of trying to add tail recursion. I started adding before I started wiring that functionality up because I kn knew that I needed to, you know, have a better feel for the quality and the consistency of everything that was running in the code. And now that I have that, it's made my life so much easier, at least for implementing this particular feature. So, you know, having tests in the compiler uh, to make sure that the bytecode that it writes out is... Uh, correct and also testing the execution in the VM to make sure that the result that I expect to see comes out. Now the testing I'm doing can definitely be better, but at least it's good enough that I feel like the changes I make to the language aren't going to sporadically break things. So uh, I think the quality will gradually get better over time, which is a good thing. Uh, the last thing I also want to say is that um, I've been thinking a lot about how I want to proceed with this channel and the streams because you know we have a very small crew of uh folks who come uh frequently to the streams which i'm very very thankful for those of you who are here every week and or i guess twice a week i suppose i'm very thankful for you who are here uh, but i kind of want to try to figure out how to um grow the scope of viewership i suppose um, not changing what I'm doing, just sort of like figure out where I can try to promote the streams to get more people to find out about it. Um, because, you know, part of the reason why I'm doing these streams is to, to work on cool projects and have people, you know, watch and, uh, uh, you know, give feedback and, you know, sort of commiserate with me over the kind of weird stuff that, that I'm doing here. But, you know, gradually I want to build actual stuff that people want to, uh, to try to use. Hey, Fade. Uh, like, you know, games or maybe other tools. And, you know, the more people who are sort of watching, the more people who are sort of invested in what's going on, the better, I think. So um, I would like your ideas on where I could potentially, um, like, post links to my stuff. I know there's obviously Reddit that I could put, find some subreddits for that. But, you know, like, the game development subreddits generally don't like you posting links to streams. So I'm, I'm trying to look for, uh, like, streaming-centered places like that. Uh, also, I, I feel like I need to start focusing more on like, you know, making Twitch the priority. I mean, I'm obviously going to stream on both platforms, but I think maybe it's easier to get discovered doing game development streams on Twitch than it is on YouTube. So I'm not exactly sure. Oh, boy. I get spammers from Twitch now. That's great. Um, <laughs> anyway, so if you have thoughts about like, you know, where I could potentially try to share uh, stuff about this, these streams, uh, that would be helpful. I think that it's ultimately going to come down to the fact that I'll have to make content for this channel that is more sort of helpful, I think, to, you know, be a thing that draws people in. So we'll see whether I have time to do that because I'm having too much fun hacking on the project for this channel to <laughs> to do other stuff at the moment. Uh, Luis says, I'm trying to prove unit testing worth on my company. It helps so much that they don't like the extra time taken to write them. The, the problem is they think that testing is supposed to be done after the fact. I believe that you should be doing testing while you're writing the code because th there, there are two ways to develop a feature. One is try to write the feature and test it with the, the actual running software, <clears throat> excuse me, software every single time that you try to run it to see, to validate the, the behavior is correct. Then there is write a feature and write tests so to isolate the behavior so you can make sure that all of the sort of assumptions you're making can be validated before you plug it into the bigger feature. 
uh, or into the whole product. And I feel like uh, option one is the one that's gonna give you headaches and option two is the one that's gonna give you confidence. So I think that's really what it comes down to. Really, you need to tell them it's not about testing after the fact, it's about actually building the functionality. You know, test-driven development, basically. I'm not really an adherent to test-driven development, but it is a very useful tool, I think. Uh, Jackson says, I think once you have a cool product, uh, people will be interested in seeing the development that goes into it. I agree. And that's part of the reason why I've decided to switch to uh, doing a little bit of game development, because if we can come up with um, a cool game that, you know, can continually have some development going into it, then that might be more interesting than what I was doing before. Though I do think now that I finally gotten the, the graphics side of things, um, usable to the point where we could do stuff on stream with it, it might be, uh, another thing that would be interesting to people. So. Uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to having some more tangible projects that people can take a look at. Uh, Fade says, uh, also validate the assumptions as you write the feature in the REPL and deploy the feature into the running app. Yeah, that's that's like, you know, master level Lisp style stuff, I think. Uh, mo most uh, people who are working on, you know, commercial projects uh, don't have those magical tools available. But that's what we're trying to build on this channel is this kind of thing as well. Okay. Um, so let's talk about uh, what we're going to do today. So I'm, as I mentioned in the last couple of streams, we're going to spend all of March hacking on a game project in preparation for the uh, Ludum Dare, Ludum Dare. Somebody will tell me how to pronounce that at some point. At some point. Uh, game Jam on April 1st. So I'm intending to participate in that and I do intend to live stream it. But uh, leading up to that, I need to build out the tools that I have to make it possible to work on a game in, a, in the course of a weekend. So... Uh, the goal of this project that we're going to work on now is to build all the tools that I'm going to need to write a cool game in Mesh and C, which can be distributed via itch.io. So um, what we're going to do is try to build a game engine and build a game. We're also going to build the tools for packaging and distribution and automating that distribution as well. So we're sort of doing like the whole uh, end to end for that before uh, the, uh, the, the game jam happens because I, what I want to do is be able to make commits to the game and have updates automatically go out so people can try it while I'm streaming live and then give feedback, etc. So I think that's going to be a pretty cool aspect of, you know, working on this project on this channel. Like even during these streams, I could potentially be making commits and you could try out the things that I'm doing and we could all sort of talk about the, uh, the results. So um, the sort of path we're going to take is that I'm going to get the basic engine running so that we can uh, start seeing something on the screen and then we're going to start building game functionality and probably in the background, like off stream, I'm going to be building all the tools to support that. And then, you know, we'll, we'll focus mostly on game coding in stream. So it stays interesting. And then I'll be able to tell you about like what all the other stuff I've, uh, accomplished off stream, uh, since the last time. So I think that's going to be a good way to do it and maybe a way to keep things moving more quickly so that, uh, we see something cool happen soon. Um, let's see. Uh, Louis says, I implemented unit testing in a set of code in our, of our current launching product, but just to prove how it works, I found a bug right away. Yeah, well, um, I also found like three bugs in my code today because I was writing unit tests, so it does work. So the game that we're, we're going to be working on is a hacking-themed variation of the tile-matching game called Mahjong. I don't know if you ever played Mahjong before, but if you were um, a Windows 3.1 or Windows 95 user back in the 90s and you had the Windows Entertainment Pack, I think, there was like a Mahjong game there. And that's where I first started playing that game. Uh, and then whenever I got into Linux, I found that GNOME had a Mahjong game as well. Uh, I don't have it installed right now. But basically, it's that game where you have sort of like a grid of tiles. Let's just see if I can get a screenshot. And uh, you're, you're just matching tiles effectively. But, you know, that's, yeah, it looks like this, basically. Uh, you just click on the tiles to match them. They go away, and you're just trying to make to eliminate all the tiles to win the game. So that's all well and good. I mean, that's like kind of a fun game to just play mindlessly, but I want to do something a little bit more interesting where you have it's sort of like set in a hacking theme where you're, you know, matching tiles, but at the same time, maybe you have somebody who's sort of uh, fighting back against you and changing the state of the tiles on the screen, doing kinds of, kinds of interesting, you know, graphical effects, that kind of stuff. So we're going to have some fun with that as we gradually get through it. But first, we need to get the basic game uh, mechanics working before we can start experimenting with all this stuff. So we'll get into more details about the design I have in mind as we go. Uh, but now we just really need to get things rolling as soon as possible. 
Um, and I also have a little video of what I had done for this exact project in 2020, I think, um, whenever I was writing with Gambit Scheme. So I was doing it like a, a purely functional game engine I was writing with Gambit Scheme back then. And uh, wow. So, God, this whole thing is in my face. Can I full screen that? There we go. So you can see I had some basic point and click working tile matching. And I've got numbers on there because I didn't have images for the tiles yet aside from just the little square that I had drawn uh, very poorly. But this is sort of what I had before, and we're gonna get to this point as soon as possible, and then we're gonna go from there to build uh, extra functionality and make it more interesting to play. And then while we're doing this, we'll be able to, um, uh, you'll be able to play it also. So you'll be able to give me feedback and tell me what you think, and then maybe we can come up with some cool ideas to, to add to it. And um, we're gonna be building this game in a repo called Crash the Stack on, in the Flux Harmonic GitHub org. Uh, there's nothing there right now, which is what we're, we're gonna do on this stream. We're just gonna build that up from scratch. And then uh, you'll be able to check out the code there as we go. So uh, without further, further ado, our tasks for today. We're gonna set up the basic project structure for the game, like the build script, uh, the main entry point, et cetera. Uh, then we're going to copy over the useful bits of code from Flux Compose that we've been working on the past couple months uh, to get a, an OpenGL window created and get the things we need for texture loading and basic gra uh, graphics rendering. And then we're going to try to set up a basic game loop in Mesh. So my, my goal is to actually use the Mesh language to be the primary language for writing the game. The, all the game loop, all the logic, everything would be written in Mesh. And this is just sort of as a validation of the capabilities of the language and also the performance. So. Uh, We'll see how far we can get with that. But my, my goal is to make it work. So we're going to uh, do what we have to do to, to make that work well. And that's pretty much it. So let me just grab a little sip of coffee here, and we're going to jump right into it. Uh, Jackson says, custom music for the game eventually? Definitely, yeah. Um, I'm trying to think of the right time to start working on the music side of the projects. Probably after we make enough projects progress with the game itself then it'll be like all right we, we need some music in this thing so we'll, we'll either try to make some music using existing tools or maybe i'll start trying to write some basic um synthesizers and a composition environment to make like chip tune so i'm gonna go with with like sort of a retro vibe for this game uh, for two reasons one is because i'm not a good artist i'm actually not an artist at all so i'm gonna try to do you know the bare minimum of making something look cool and sort of lo-fi at the same time and then also um it's easier to make sort of chip tunes types sounds and music whenever you don't have a really high powered synthesizer yet. So it's probably gonna be easier to write the algorithms necessary to make that kind of music. So we'll try to go with that and then we'll build up our capabilities over time and maybe make more ambitious uh, games and content to go along with that. So, uh, so far in this project, all I have is just this assets folder with uh, the tile image that we're gonna be displaying. Uh, we can't even see that really. And the reason why is because sometimes Firefox likes to, likes to crash EXWM whenever I'm on stream. Um, so I wanted to make sure I had that downloaded in advance. Uh, Jackson says, I'm excited to see the design of a synthesizer. Yeah, me too. I haven't done it before, but uh, I have a general vague idea about how one would go about that. And I'm looking forward to trying it out uh, on the streams at some point in the future. Okay. So uh, let's see, we've got a bunch of unrelated files open here, but uh, that's okay. Let me get into a shell. So, all right, so first of all, we need to grab, well, I could probably just grab it from here. So I need to grab a build script. So I'm gonna grab the build script from um, mesh slash uh, build, I think. And I'm, I'm going to use this build script because it pulls down all the dependencies that I need for, oops, for what we need to do. Um, and let me open that file up really quickly. So, whoops. All right, so build, come on. I'm in the wrong project path, apparently. So crash a stack, build.sh. All right, so we don't have some of these files here yet in the file list we have main.c which we will need so let me just go ahead and add that in main.c uh, make directory all right and then i'm going to include uh, mesh.h int main uh, int argc care star star right argv i'll have to double check that let me go look at the see mesh source main.c yeah, that's basically it. So let me just copy this stuff as well. We kind of need the, the start, starting point. 
So this is what you would see as like a basic mesh app. Uh, compiler slash modules, we'll need that. I was, we'll also need our own modules folder. I think I'm actually gonna go with uh, source for this, in fact. We'll see how that goes. Um, mesh load file, uh, we're gonna go with main.msc on that. So that's like the initial script. And we can leave out this memory report stuff. I have a, a way to write out like how much the GC has left to free. And we don't, we don't really need that right yet, but we will eventually because we need to make sure that the GC is working right. Um, anything else here? Printf, let's get the standard IO in here as well. Standard IO.h. All right, so let's try to run the build script. It probably won't work, but uh, we'll fix it. Oh, actually, I need to uh, run this inside of vterm. Uh, actually, let's exit that first. Dot, dot, crash the stack. I also want to copy. Let's get the one from Flux Compose, I think. Uh, Flux Compose manifest.scm. We're going to get the Geeks manifest so I can pull up my uh, local dev environment for that. Copy that here. And uh, let me jump into manifest.scm. Um, so we definitely need... We don't need Guile. I don't know why I still have that in there. So we need these two things. And we'll need these for font rendering. So we'll... So we'll go with that for now. Geeks shell dash m manifest.scm. And then once that is finished installing, then we can run build.sh. So what this is going to do is clone the uh, compiler code and it's also going to pull down muscle C so that uh, we can do static uh, builds of this application, which is going to be more interesting whenever we start distributing the app because I can just give you like a single binary to run on Linux that has pretty much everything you need baked into it already uh in theory so we'll, we'll see whether that turns out to be the case but uh at least for now i think it's gonna work all right cool so this actually did built build it built the mesh compiler it built the uh main exe um let's add a source slash main dot msc file for mesh display hello or let's just say crash the stack Okay, so that should be enough for this. In fact, just define module, crash the stack main. We may need to actually, well, no, it's fine for now. We'll go with that. Turn on scheme mode here. All right. So now let's go and run it. So we're gonna look into the bin slash, what is it called, mesh? Okay, we need to change that uh, build script to, whoops, come on. Uh, crash the stack and then crash the stack. Uh, Fade uh, has hit the nail on the head. Crash the stack. I am a, I'm a big fan of the 1990, was it 1995 movie Hackers? So yeah, the, the, the aesthetic will, will come across. All right, so whoops, let's change this as well. Creating... <laughs> And if you wonder why I'm doing, using a bash script for this, it's because the mesh build program that I'm working on is going to take care of all this, but I have a sort of handwritten bash script for it for now. Okay, so let's run that one more time. And then bin slash crash the stack. And it says crash the stack. Cool. So we've got the basic application working that does have a uh, mesh based entry point. So main.msc, let's think now. Um, what we need is to pull in some stuff from our other projects for getting the OpenGL window up. So we'll pull some things in from uh, Flux Compose now, I think. So let's uh, go into uh, Flux Compose. Yeah, sure. And then we will look at uh, lib, I think. Graphics.c. I'm just going to go ahead and, and nab all that code. Going into crash stack folder. Um, so let's think of how, how I want to organize this. So I will say crash. Yeah, crash. Let's just go with crash as the module name, maybe. Uh, crash graphics.c. All right, so create the folder. And then um, we need, so these aren't going to be there. But we're going to need some of these other collateral files like CGLM and uh, GLAD.h. So it's going to be interesting trying to pull those things in. Um, everything else is pretty standard, I believe. We may need to have a graphics.h file as well. So uh, if I go back into graphics from Flux Compose and go into flux.h graphics 
I might be able to pull some of these things. We don't need all of them, but some of them we're going to pull. And we're going to improve the design of the stuff we we're doing so far because I, I'm not happy with some of the code that I had written for Flux Impose. That's because I'm, I'm learning C patterns again as I do this, which is kind of nice. Also kind of annoying to do stuff the wrong way. Okay. So, um, we will try to think of the best way to approach this. It's probably better to get things compiling first. I'm going to comment this stuff out because we don't want it in just yet. And then, um, back in graphics.c, I want to go and pull in the other stuff we need vendor. Okay. So this vendor folder has CGLM has glad, uh, this mini Z thing that I probably won't use. So I can go and uh, mark these three and then go back into uh, crash the stack. Um, let's see, maybe I'll make a vendor folder here, vendor, and then paste those. Really? Come on, empty ring. Oh, I didn't yank it. Bad Emacs user, flux compose, uh, what was it? Lib vendor, okay, so yank, thank you. Then back in crash the stack, go to vendor, then paste. All right, so we got all that stuff here now, which is gonna be a nice huge bump in file size, which I'm not fully happy about, but whatever. All right, so in build.sh, we're gonna have to pull in a couple of these things. Um, let's see, C flags, I compiler include, I, uh, let's see, vendor slash, uh, oh, thank you, SPNG, I slash vendor slash uh, CGLM, I dot slash vendor slash glad. I think that's what we need to do for that. Let's give it a shot building and see what happens. In fact, let's use the um, compile program and then run build.sh. I'm sure we're going to get a lot of errors here. Okay, no such file or directory. That's, mm, ah, yeah, okay, I gotta fix that. Compile, fix this path here. Okay, build.sh command not found, uh, okay. Maybe I'll just run it with bash. Ah, okay, I think that was actually something I needed to do in manifest, which I forgot. So let's put in bash here because it doesn't come by default in a geeks profile. So we're gonna go back to vterm. Well, no, we don't need to do that. Let's just run and compile again. All right, so that will install bash into the profile. And then, okay, so it says it compiled. I'm not so sure. Uh, I probably need to go look at, let's see, flux impose. You know what? Let's do this. Let's open Flux and pose a separate project tab because uh, I'm going to get annoyed having to go back and forth between folders. Um, CMake lists include directories. Okay, we have that. Mesh include, glad. Oh, okay, so it needs to be glad include. So let's go back and fix that in this uh, build.sh. So that's glad slash include. Um, also, I need to add the graphics file. That's probably why we didn't see anything. So main.c and then crash slash graphics.c. Now we're going to get some compiler errors for sure. Okay. Oh, and then probably because I got a ton of code in that graphics.c file that uh, is not set up correctly. So um, that's going to be fine. Uh, that's fine. That's fine. Okay. So we got all these types here we don't really need. I mean, we're going to need analogs to them, I think. A uh, scene sort of makes sense as a type to have. Um, but for now, we're not gonna use that. Let me just uh, delete some stuff here. That looks good. Graphics initialized. Um, anything flux underscore, let's see. Uh, flux underscore. So uh, this is ultimately gonna be the Substratic engine, but we're gonna write it sort of baked into the code before we, um, hmm, that does beg the question, should I put this in a different folder structure? Be before we uh, finish the project, we're gonna sort of extract the engine code into another um, project effectively. Okay, so replace flux with 
Yeah, S T C sub. Yeah, sub is okay, I guess. Subst. Subst is kind of painful to type. Ah, eh, sub. Let's go with sub for now. Yes, 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 yes. Just doing find and replace here. I may do some more tweaks on this at some point in the future as well. Some of these things also are not needed. So we're going to delete some more code pretty seriously in a moment. And ultimately, the uh, Substratic engine will be used in Flux Compose. So we're going to start breaking all of these things we're making out into separate projects that can be used um, interchangeably, or I guess in different cases or different contexts. Um, let me just press A, right? No, that didn't work, did it? How do you do uh, apply all? Question mark for help. Replace all remaining, uh, okay, question, uh, sorry, exclamation point. There we go. All right, cool. I like that, uh, what is it called? Query replace. Yeah, query replace is a great command in Emacs. Okay, so we got all that done. Um, there's that thumbnail code that we need to get out of here. So let's just delete that and delete also that uh, test rendering stuff we were doing. Graphics loop thing we don't explicitly need, but I'll keep it because it might be useful to uh, use as a reference. Uh, sub graphics init. I'm already regretting this sub name, so maybe I'll just do sub to subst. Yeah, I know it's terrible, but whatever. Let's go. Okay. So, um, graphics funk, graphics scene set. Some of these things are not needed yet. Uh, this flex harmonic thumbnail thing is, needs to go away. Just trying to uh, reduce the surface area a little bit here. Render to file, we'll keep that because we probably want to do the screenshots. Uh, show preview window, we'll, we'll adapt that code, I think. Okay, so uh, now let's go into the graphics.h file. Maybe I'll undo the commenting out of all the stuff and I'll go and do the same kind of revert, or sorry, uh, rename here, flux underscore to subst underscore exclamation point. Okay, and do I have uh, include uh, mesh.h? I should take care of some of this. Let's go into flux.h and see what else we need to pull in as a header. So probably a lot of these things. In fact, oh, and also that too. So let's go and drop those in. Just take that right out. Okay. And in graphics.c, I think we have a window type that I want to take and move. Some of these things will definitely move around so, uh, so that we improve the design a bit. So instead of having these opaque pointer types, we're going to have real type defs for some of these things. Uh, subst render context. Yeah, no, it's terrible. Okay. And then uh, subst, subst window is going to be one as well. Subst window. These will not be uh, pointer type defs. These are going to be real struct type defs. Then subst render context, and this will be a real type with a pointer. All right. <clears throat> Maybe I'll move that up here. And then uh, draw flags. Yeah, we'll probably want those. So anything flux, we're going to do subst here. Yeah, I've got some. Whoa. Why are those still in here? Is it delete them? Okay. Cool. Um, no more flux stuff. Oh, there's flux draw none. Uh, yeah, we'll, we'll we'll clean up a lot of the stuff. I probably need to change the way I, I name enums. Okay, so that's enough for the basics. I think there's like texture stuff. Let's comment out some of the texture related things because we'll bring in that library a little bit later. 
We just want to get the window showing up first. Uh, rect fill, that can sort of stay there. Shader compile, that's fine. All right, so anything texture related here? Oh boy, there's a lot of stuff. So let's do the same rename. And then anything subs window is going to have to be a pointer. That will go away. Okay, so let's do this. Subst window star window. Subs. Oh no, sorry, that's wrong. Subst window window. Subst window star window. We need to replace that everywhere because it's going to have to be a pointer. This also will be a pointer. Let's check all use cases of these. Actually, let's just do it this way. Subst window. Uh, that one can become a normal type reference now. Subst window. Okay, so that one needs to be changed. But more or less, they're all looking good now. I think that's going to be okay. We're going to have to try to compile it in a second. Uh, Stevis says, can you show me how your game looks? Uh, the game, we're just we're just creating the, the basic code for it now. It doesn't actually have a, anything visible yet. But by the end of the stream, maybe we will. We'll see. All right, so we got a lot of problems here. Um, let's see. Location undeclared. Okay, so it's not liking the whole macro that I have. Did I, did I include that? No, I haven't included it yet. Okay, so include graphics.h. That should take some of the problems away. Still have quite a few errors. Window context is a pointer. Do you mean to use arrow? Ooh, that was loud, boy. All right, so let's see. Window context. Uh, we're probably going to have a lot of these. So context, context, context. How about this? Uh, context dot. I wonder if this is a regular expression. Place context dot with um, context arrow. Okay, so that's probably why context dot with context arrow there we go so let's just do all those to make it happy okay that's less errors i think or not uh when to create conflicting types so we got to go back into the header file now and fix all the references to uh let's see window to star window let's just fix all those in, in a bulk and also this one as well to make this a pointer return Okay. What else? This is definitely faster than rewriting the code myself, I have to say. Invalid type argument of arrow. So 273, graphics.h, uh, 273. Context is what in this case? Uh, I think it's a stack allocated? No, context. Ah. So we need to do the same thing with uh, subst render context context now needs to be a pointer. Subst render context star context. All instances of that need to change. We're getting there. All right, so now um, anything subst log. Let me just grab that function for, from Flux Compose. So graphics.c. Um, Flux log. Let me see where I define that right here. No, no, that's just the the extern or the declaration. Flux log. Oh, I remember now. It's in log.c. Okay, so we have some stuff in here. We probably need to replicate somewhere. I don't know if Substratic is the right place to do that or maybe Mesh or a separate library. But for now, we're just going to pull in the same stuff. All right, so let's uh, go. Sorry, these notification sounds are a little bit distracting and I have to wait and look over at my uh, video feed to see what the notification was about. Uh, hey, Luis, thanks for following. And also thanks for following to uh, Stephis VK, <clears throat> VK, excuse me. All right, so now let's jump back over to the crash code and 
we'll go do a log dot uh, C here. We're just gonna paste this code in. We're gonna do the same kind of uh, flux renaming that we were doing before. Anything uh, flux underscore to uh, subst underscore. And that should be good enough to get that off my back. Then log dot H and we're gonna copy the same um, signatures. Let's clean this up a little bit. Clean that up, clean that up, add some semicolons. And then include, well, do we need anything there? Probably not. Okay, so this needs to have log.h. And then graphics C needs to have log.h as well. Let's see if that makes it any better now. All right, a lot of scene related stuff it doesn't like. Hey, Alex, thanks, man. All right, anything scene related, uh, I think we're gonna scene, please. We're gonna get rid of anything scene related for now. This is all garbage code at the moment. And there's some subtractive texture. We could probably just drop that code in really fast too. I mean, we're gonna have to do that before the end anyway. So I might have to just get to that. Uh, panic macro. Let's grab a panic macro because I do need that. Let's go over to, come on now. Let's go over to this flux compose and was it in util? Where did I have panic? Must be in this panic, okay. So in uh, graphics, we're gonna put that into like a util.h file. Oh, I also need to add some inclusion guards on these two, I forgot. So let's just grab a little example of that here. Drop that in there. And if, okay, so in this one, I'm gonna use a little slightly different uh, naming convention here. Subst uh, util h. Okay, whoa. Pressing the wrong keys here, obviously. Okay, so now uh, we, we need to go into uh, graphics at H, do the same. Let's just paste that right up there and then end if at the bottom. All right, now I think we can go, whoops. <laughs> I'm, I'm not managing my workspace as well here, apparently. Okay, so do we have a panic? No, so we still need to include uh, util.h here. Uh, should I just do this in alphabetical order? All right, so now, I think it's, oh, still doesn't like panic, does it? Implicit declaration of function panic. Well, this is a macro. If you haven't heard of macros before, C compiler. util.h. Ah, it's because I did not update this to say graphics. Graphics. Okay, we'll try to build it again. And all right, so I think, oh, flux log panic. Let's see, we need to have util.h needs to pull in uh, log.h. And then this needs to be subs to log. Okay. So I think panic should be happy now. And now uh, draw rect fill conflicting types. Yeah, so the header file needs to also have the update for the context uh, variable or the context parameter. We're getting closer, much closer. All right, so now it wants texture stuff. So let's go into texture.h, uh, copy our inclusion guards, whoa. All right, so we're gonna drop that in. We're gonna say end if here. We're also going to change this to texture. All right, texture. Now, um, let's go into Flux Compose. Uh, texture, nope, wrong project. Where's graphics? Texture.c. Uh, PNG load. We can, in fact, just copy some of this stuff over to the C file as well. PNG save. I don't really need that, but it won't hurt to have it. Uh, load, image load internal. Mm, okay. 
So we're gonna go back over to crash the stack and then inside of texture.c, we're gonna paste that in. We're also going to include uh, texture.h. Then we need to do some rename surgery on everything. Um, so we will go grab all the flux underscore stuff. We'll also go grab all of the flux and rename that to subst. And then uh, the texture type also needs to be changed to not be silly. So if we go into flux.h texture, okay, so the definition isn't there. It must be in this file somewhere. Okay, it's not in here. Let's see, where was that? Uh, struct flux text. Sure. Flux internal. Okay, we got some stuff in there that I forgot about. Okay, so back into texture dot H. We're gonna drop in this struct type. We're gonna type def it. And we're gonna rename it to uh, subst texture. All right, so that's good now. I think we also need, what is it? Uh, include int types dot H. Yep. So that should make that happy. And now texture.c, we have all that. Um, include standard io.h, because we have file uh, handles. Now let's bring our compiler back. I also need to go into build.sh and pull in the texture uh, file, texture.c, then build. All right. so. Got some warnings that need to be addressed, but at least some of this is getting better. Um, now in graphics.c, we got to replace all references to subst texture, texture with subst texture star texture because we're making this an actual pointer type now, but strangely, oh, no, that's the wrong project. Okay. That's the one. Let's do this again. Hey, what's the problem here? Subst texture? Ah, I made a typo. Great. All right. And then we're going to go into graphics.h and do the same thing. What did I just do? Okay. Hey, Bill. Nice to see you. Okay, so subst texture, that's in graphics.c, um, unknown type name. Let's go into subst texture logo. Okay, so this can now be, ah, this render test needs to go away anyway. Subst texture. Just find all references of that. That should, that should be good now. Uh, scene render, implicit declar declaration of scene render. So scene Render. Let's uh, comment that code out. Uh, would we still have current scene stuff? Current scene. Okay. Yeah. So I think we're getting closer now. Much, much less errors. I think I need to go and pull in texture.h. All right. Glad GL vertex attrib pointer makes pointer. Mm, okay, we'll look at that one in a minute. Oh, I wonder. Nah, we'll get back to that. Unknown type name subst font. Okay, so that's also one we needed to deal with, but uh, let's not do that right now. I think we're we just need to get the window on the screen first. Uh, just font. Let's just get this out of here. We're just going to keep around some of this code for a little bit, and then we're going to get rid of it. Font, 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 font. Any other references? Nope. Okay, good. Okay. PNG save implicit declaration of texture PNG save. Um, Texture.h. Did we copy that stuff over yet? Nope. Let's go to texture.c and let's grab these uh, functions. So we can uh, put the signatures in the header file.
Oops, I need to not delete the, the signature parameters. Okay, and we got this now. Go do that. Okay, now we got these defined. Um, we need to have a mesh.h in here also. Include mesh.h because we have the mesh, mesh memory and value types there. Okay, we're getting real close to building, at least on our own code. Incompatible types, when assigning to type subs texture, graphics.c, uh, 478. Logo is what? Oh, okay, so PNG load needs to be updated. PNG load, so this needs to be a pointer being returned. And also in the texture.c file, this needs to be a pointer too. And when we go down to subst texture, this is wrong, that needs to be changed. And this needs to be a pointer. All right, so is everything else good there? Nope, that's not good. That should be changed, okay. Cool. Now, I think uh, I need to pull in, oh, SPNG's here already. Subst render context from incompatible pointer type. Uh, let's go back into graphics.c, that's definitely not the right thing to do. Context equals. Uh, we just want to copy the pointer over. All right, and now uh, there's some scene stuff in here still, 681. Graphic scene set, this is uh, kind of irrelevant for now. Okay, cannot create uh, crash graphics.o. Oh. Yeah, we need to pre-make the directory structure, which is a little bit annoying. So in the bin folder, I think I need to create uh, crash. What? No, crash with a control F. There we go. Okay, compilation terminated. Uh, oh, flux internal and texture.c. Let's get rid of that header because we don't need that or that. And all right, now we're starting to get into uh, OpenGL related include issues, which is better because we're getting closer to actually doing something. Implicit function declaration. GL texture 2D undeclared. All right. So we cut a swath through a lot of stuff we needed to copy over, doing a bunch of renames, which is good. Um, let's see. Let's see if we can figure out why this is happening. Let me go back and look once again at uh, the CMake lists file. And see if there's anything else I had to do in here. GLFW, target link libraries. Okay. Maybe I need to start pulling in libs now. So let me try in uh, vterm, uh, package config, libs, GLFW, uh, three. There we go. Okay. That's the one. So we're gonna need to pull in a few of these uh, package config. In fact, that's probably the other problem. So I need to pull in the C flags as well for GLFW3. Well, there we go. So um, let's go into um, build.h into the C flags listing here. And I'm going to do a little sub process call to package config. And let's see if that helps. It won't link, but if it can at least compile, that would be helpful. All right, so the GL stuff is still not happy. Um, what else did I have in the CMake lists? I'm having to do some of this stuff, you know, manually now. So it's not the most ideal thing in the world, but it's fine. So back to vterm, um, package config, open GL, no. OpenGL, nope. Mesa. Hmm. I may have to look into the uh, echo uh, package config path. All right, so let's take a look at this path really quick. If you don't know what uh, package config is, it's basically a kind of standard thing in Linux where, um, whoops, there's a, a tool called package config, which knows how to look at um, configuration files to give you all the libraries and header file include paths you need to build C projects or you know projects like that. 
All right, taking a look at all the PC files here to see if we have anything obviously related to OpenGL. Not seeing it at the moment. Maybe it's in one of the other folders, probably the profile folder, in fact. So it's gotta be in, let's see, OH. Yeah, so one of these, I think, because we're in a geek's profile at the moment. All right, so let's do an LS on that one. See what's in it. XCB, uh, XPAT. We see uh, there's OS Mesa. That sounds um, useful. I see GLFW in there also. See ya, Bill. Thanks for coming. All right, so GLES, G oh, GL. Okay, I, that should have been my clue. So let's go back to um, this, GL. Okay, so that's a lot of stuff. So that's going to be our C flags for uh, pulling in OpenGL, which is a kind of a shocking number of folders. All right, so uh, build a sh. We're going to do the same thing. This whole sub process uh, call for the GL includes this. I don't know if I need to do that though, for the includes at least, because Glad should be taking care of that. Let me check what the CMake list had in it. Find package, include directories, uh, include, free type include deers. Huh. Okay, so I didn't include that. So maybe I should leave out the, this could cause problems for me, I think. Let's leave that out for this one. Um, glad include, let's check glad include. So vendor slash glad slash include. There's glad and glad.h. Did I include glad in all the right places? Let's see. Um, graphics.h. We have glad.h here. GLFW include none. We're not even including GLFW here, so that's surprising. GL, yeah, we need to pull in GLFW for sure. Uh, include. Let me check for that one really quick. Um, Looking for flux.h, uh, glfw, where is that? Flux internal. That's weird. Graphics.c? Yeah, there it is. So what about my graphics.c file? Okay, it's there. But it needs to be in the header too, apparently. So let's put that right there too. Okay, so we're gonna go back to our compilation buffer and still got some errors related to GL. Uh, file open, oh, okay, forgot about that one. We'll deal with that in a minute. Subs log, so in texture.c, we need to pull in our uh, log.h file. Okay. And then GLRGBA, am I missing something? Yeah, I'm missing GLAD here. Maybe that's what the problem is. So let's go back into graphics.c, um, GLAD.h, put that right there. That's much better. Okay, cool. And we actually got the linker, which is good. So libm, uh, we need to have libm here. So let's go into uh, build.sh. Um, so libs, libs equals um, dash lm, we need that one. And we're gonna use that for compilation, I think. Well, actually, we, we just need that for linking. So let me go down to the link step and put this in the uh, libs section. Do I have the right? Okay, yeah. So libs there should work. Yeah, good. A little bit further along, undefined reference to SPNG. So uh, I guess we, we got to build SPNG as part of this too. I need a build script. Uh, that's something I did not think about whenever I was uh, deciding to do this stuff myself. But that's okay. Undefined reference to glad. Okay, we need to put that in too. So libs, um, we're going to pull in... Uh, package config libs uh, G no undefined reference to glad is that a it's not a library though 
Kind of weird. Well, let's do this at least. I'll put this in. Sorry if you hear some screaming in the background as usual. Okay. Um, does Glad have C files that also need to be compiled? I didn't think it did. All right, let's look at uh, source. No, vendor Glad source. Okay, so it has a C file that needs to be pulled in. So we'll, we'll actually add that to our own uh, build. So uh, let's go to vendor slash glad slash uh, source slash glad dot C. That should help, I think. All right, good. So now cannot find glad dot O, no such file or directory. Oh, right. Interestingly, it did not complain. Ben. Is it not creating object files at all? Where am I? Let's delete that. Shouldn't there be a binary here also? All right, so vendor slash glad slash source. So you say it's up to date, but I don't believe you because I don't see it. Something strange is happening there. Let's go into uh, eShell. So LS bin. Crash. Graphics.o, texture.o. Make dear bin slash vendor slash uh, glad. Let me uh, do make dear dash p there. And then try to compile one more time. Uh, Nicholas says, I know you said this like an hour ago, but you are an artist, perhaps not a visual artist, but programming and its periphery have an art and creative expression to them. Well, I definitely agree. I appreciate that. Um, but yeah, I, I mean artists in like the graphical artist sense, but I'm going to actually try to get better with my skills on that too at some point um, because I would like to do everything myself. Working with other people is fun, but um, sometimes it's easier to just do things yourself, even though it takes longer. Um, all right, let's go back in the compilation buffer. All right, so now we at least see that. Oh, we got deleted again. Why did that happen? Oh, source. Is that what it needs? Source. Uh, it doesn't seem right, does it? Let me look at what I have in the build script. So, output file, output dir. Dot o. Oh, source dear. Okay. Maybe I should move the vendor stuff into the source folder. I'm not crazy about that idea, but apparently this is what we're going to have a problem with. Hey, Gavin. Nice to see you. All right. So let me uh, yank this one and drop it in here. Mm. We we'll uh, do, do this better in the future, I think. All right, so build.sh, we're going to go back and fix our uh, links to some of this stuff. So we're going to put source in here on these vendor paths. Vendor is sort of just a name I've seen used in other places. I don't really like it necessarily. All right, so dlsim. Okay, that makes sense. Um, oh, it wants glibc. Great. Um, what is the, let's see, GCC link against glibc, uh, shouldn't it do that by default? DSO missing from command line. Oh, it wants 2.25. Great. I don't know what version I have here. Get out of my face. Dash L. Hmm. Yeah, if I if I use muscle, it will work. And I can avoid that problem probably, but I can't use ad, uh, address sanitizer with muscle, I think. And I kind of want to have address sanitizer because it saves my butt many, many times. 
What did I just do there? Yeah, I deleted the file. That's great. Let's see. What if I go... Uh, MZ. If I go look at some of the stuff in the CMake folder, now the build folder. Because there's some make files in here. Glib dash L uh, C make files make file two. No. Find a strange here. How about I just look for this instead? Um, lib DL. Oh. Is that what it's called? Maybe that's what I, I need to put uh, LDL. Let's see, uh, GCC lib DL. Library DL, how about that? So let's go into build.sh, um, LDL, try that, good. Undefined reference to subst log. Oh, I didn't put uh, log.c in this list. That makes sense. SP and G. Okay, so now I need to get to that part of uh, pulling in the SP and G files. Okay. Um, I think it's just SP and G.C, if I'm not mistaken. I thought this was a header only library, though. Source, vendor, SP and G. Okay, there's a C file. Fine. Not a big deal. SPNG source SPNG.C. Cool. No such file directory because I need to create a folder for every stinking thing that I make here. Probably should automate that part of the process so that it's possible to spit that out spit that out on um, a CI. Vendor SPNG source. Why didn't it create it? V vendor slash source. Oh. Huh? Yeah, that's right. Source, spng.o. It's not here, though. Okay. Go back to the shell. ls uh, bin slash vendor slash spng. I'm I'm not really trusting Deerad at the moment, as you can tell. But I don't think it's Deerad that's a problem. I'm kind of curious as to why it thinks that the file's not there because it should be compiling it. Did I do something wrong? Let's see, uh, source vendor SPNG. Oh, there's no source folder because I'm uh, lacking the ability to read. And then we need to go back here to vendor SPNG and delete this folder. And it should just be there now. Okay, so now if we go into the compilation buffer, run it. Took a while, that's fine. Uh, now I need to get the uh, Zlib library pulled in. So let's go do that, dash LZ. Okay, now we just got some complaints about this uh, file function that is from the flux compose code. So if I go into file, no, graphics, file.c, I'll just grab this stuff, go back into uh, crash file.c, paste it in, delete that, put in an include file.h. I will do some reorganization on all this stuff at some point in the near future because I'm not really happy with what it's looking like at the moment, but we're just trying to get things working as fast as possible right now. Okay, we got all that in there now, and we need to copy the signatures so we can put them into a header file, file.h. Drop that in, uh, delete all the bodies. Miss the line, that's okay. Delete that, put some semicolons on the end. All right, do that. And now I need to go and grab a header file so I can get the, just copy the um, include guard. 
but file the h here and diff now in texture.c we'll go and include that uh file that h and we'll just make it a oops a sorted list there and i need to go into build.h and put the uh, file library inside of it all right undefined reference to panic in file.c that's going to be coming from util.h Hey, compiled. Okay, so it's not going to do anything yet, but at least it did compile. That took a long time to get to a point where it went somewhere. So in vterm, uh, slash bin slash crash the stack. Okay, cool. So it builds. Kind of curious how big the binary is. Bin, I mean, it doesn't really matter, but. Okay, so, wow, that's a lot of stuff in there. Okay, so now um, the the course of action is to get a window displaying. Now I'm sure we're gonna deal with some crashes along the way because I just copied and pasted a ton of code. But let's see what happens. So let's go into uh, main.msc. Now, from this point, I wanna try and uh, come up with a decent looking API in mesh that's gonna call into the C libraries and um, and do the things that we wanna do. So first of all, we need to initialize the window. So uh, we will import uh, Substratic Graphics, I think. Uh, we're just gonna go with these uh, module names for now and then we'll figure it out later. And then uh, define uh, window uh let's see <clears throat> window i'm trying to think of like the, the naming terminology that i want to use for this window create i guess and uh we, we, we will make it um 1280 by 720 for now and that will give us a window now we can say window show window so that's the two functions we need to at least create a window and show it on the screen. And then um, here we'll probably wanna have some kind of loop. So loop, and this is the thing that I was implementing uh, last stream is the ability to do these um, uh, let functions for looping. But then again, maybe it's not really appropriate right now because we don't have anything to pass in as a parameter. And I, don't, I don't know if I made it so that you could have a um, parameter list or binding list let it's probably gonna give me a complaint so how about this we'll do this uh, define uh, render loop as a function that has no parameters and then we can just say display rendering it's just gonna spam the crap out of us for a second and then uh, that's pretty much it we'll have a render loop we'll have some window stuff this won't run yet we need to uh, bind these functions to the public interface we can do that in main.c so in main.c, we need to register some functions. That's going to come from the mesh VM uh, register. Nope, not that one. Uh, native? No. Why is that function not showing up? It's inside of, um, let's see. Compiler slash uh, mesh. No, no, no. Include, no, no, not that one either. Let's go to source slash vm.h native. All right, so this function right here. So we need to call uh, this function, register some API functions with mesh. And we need to also load up a module first. So I think I should put this function inside of the uh, graphics code base somewhere, but we're gonna do it here just for getting things off the ground. So object module module equals uh, mesh module resolve by name. Uh, I think it, I give it a VM. And also the name of the module, which should be substratic graphics. And then, whoops. And then here, what just happened? Okay, I think I didn't copy all that stuff correctly. Here we'll say at or ampersand VM and then the module that we loaded up. 
Um, and then the name of the function. So we have window create. Then we need to have a function pointer. And let me look at how I was doing that inside of the, um, let's see. Actually, vm.c is a good place to look at that. So vm.c, we can look at uh, register core modules. Yeah, so that's what we want to look at. Mesh projects are process arguments. Okay, let's go back to main.c here. Gavin, I saw your question. I'll answer you just one minute. All right, so we need the name of a function. So in this case, uh, subst graphics uh, window create. And we need, want to uh, bind that out. All right, so now I just need a subs graphics window create. So in graphics at H window create. Yeah, so we already have a function called that. So um, MSC. So I think we're, we're going to have a little naming convention where the mesh function bindings are through MSC. Eventually, we're going to get away from having this kind of uh, explicit bindings to C functions. All right, so subs graphics window create MSC, and then I need to copy the standard uh, format for these parameters. If I can jump there, thank God. All right. Sometimes eglot works, other times it does not. So let's copy that, go back into graphics.h. We're going to paste that in. And now all I need to do is just go into, well, let's see. Maybe I have a similar function already down here. Show preview window. Yeah. Uh, let's put it there. And this also needs to be a uh, object pointer that comes back. Yeah. Yeah. We want it to be a pointer because uh, we're creating an actual C object, but we want to return a pointer back to mesh so it can be passed around. Alex says, I'm trying to be a void star type in this meeting today. Uh, Gavin says, random question, but do you use any plugins for intelligent killing, like preventing you from killing parens in quotes, e.g. paredit? And Fade says, I use par uh, paredit all the time for that. Uh, in scheme languages, I use Lispy, which helps with that. But uh, paredit probably would be pretty helpful too. Okay, so uh, let's copy this function. Go into uh, graphics.c. The right graphics at C. Uh, we'll go right around here. Paste that in. Uh, is it a value that needs return? That might actually be right. Value. Okay. And we might just rip off the code from this function. So I will grab all that. Put it right here. Let's see. Is there anything else I need from that? Uh, arg count. Args. Um, the window itself, setting the window size, uh, window show. We don't want to do that yet because I'm going to do that as a separate function. So we'll just leave that out for now. Okay. So window create MSC, uh, return window preview windows a pointer. Okay. Well, I definitely want to do that. So, uh, was it? Object value um, mesh object uh, make pointer, I think. VM uh, mem. I hope that some of these songs are not copyrighted. It's supposed to be in a playlist that is uh, protected, but this is something like from Akira, so that doesn't really seem usable. <laughs> anyway. These people who make these uh, stream-friendly uh, playlists, I don't know if I would trust them because I already got bit by one. Okay, so uh, Gavin says, Lispy seems cool, but being Lisp only prevented me from using it. Yeah, that's definitely a, a thing to, to consider whenever picking one of these things. Okay, so now, um, make pointer. I don't remember what the signature was for that. Let's see, let's go to vm.h. We'll go over to object.h, uh, make pointer. Come on now. Uh, make pointer. Uh, pointer and then is managed. Okay. Um, hmm. I do want that to be managed. What the hell, man? So 
Packing graphics at C, um, make pointer. The pointer is going to be this window object and then true because I want it to be garbage collected by mesh. All right, that's good. That all should work. Now we also need a similar method for uh, window show. Uh, yeah, Gavin says stream beats is also an option. Um, yeah, so I've been using stream beat stuff and the sort of albums or playlists that I've been using are so redundant that I just got tired of it. So I'm trying some other stuff right now. Uh, window show MSC. We're going to pull in the sole window parameter here. Um, let's see. I'm going to return a uh, TVAL. And then a subst window, graphics window show. Okay, so graphics window show, subst window star um, pointer, pointer. So this is going to be a, an object pointer as pointer. Need to validate that these are actually what I expect. I've been saying for a while now that I need to have some kind of a macro or something or function to make this easier to pull these values out. Okay, so interesting. So I don't need that. I'll just do this, and we don't need that either. So now we have this show function. We're going to go into graphics.h. We're going to drop this in right here. I'm going to fix this. It seems to be a value instead. Um, that goes away. That goes away as well. Um, this one, I think it's okay for now. And fix that as well. So now this uh, graphics show window MSC, we're going to go back into main. And then add the registration for window show. Window show MSC. MSC. Okay, so now we should be able to define those two functions. Let's see what happens. I'm kind of curious. Okay, so we got a little bit of a complaint here. Implicit declaration, mesh module resolve by name. Maybe I put that uh, function in wrong. So if I go to vm.h instead of go to the module.h, I don't care. Just show me. Uh, resolve by name string. That's the one I want. Okay, so back into main. Resolve by name string. All right, that fixed it. Uh, now, uh, subs graphics window create. Do I pull in graphics.c here? No, of course not. So include graphics.h. Uh, compilation terminated. No such file or directory. Why? Oh, where am I? Okay. Uh, maybe I need to have, what is it? Uh, crash slash graphics at H. Okay. That helped. And where is that? Graphics dot H. Have an empty include. Wow. Smart. And then finally graphics at H. I think that's where I was supposed to be putting that in that GLFW. So texture, texture dot C. We're going to copy over this GLFW into graphics.c. Oh, what? Graphics.h. Okay, that's the, that's the place for it right there. All right, a couple more problems. Um, yeah, that one I don't know about yet. And then implicit declaration of object value. Do you mean object val? I did mean object val. You're right. Thank you. That was helpful. Object value. Okay, so I'm not running it yet. That makes sense. Let's do that. So we're going to compile and then and and bin slash crash the stack. All right, undefined variable window create. That's interesting because I bound it. Oh, what do I call it? Main.c window create. I bound it to the module. Substratic graphics. Huh. Exported. I wonder if I'm missing a step. 
go back to vm.c, get resolved by name string, uh, vm define native. And then inside of main.msc, I'm pulling in some stratic graphics. That's very strange that it's not showing up. Let's think for a second here. I'm curious as to why that doesn't give me anything. Some stratic graphics, it shouldn't matter. I don't actually have a path for that though. Let's check uh, modular.c. I'm gonna sort of insert some stuff into the code a little bit and see what's going on here. So, um, come on now, resolve by name string, nah, by name, that's good enough right there. So if we don't find the path, which we won't, we may actually find it here though. Uh, printf uh, found module, because it's really the only module we're loading at this point. And we're looking for module printf, Uh, module name cares. Now, why is this not? Am I in the wrong? I'm in the wrong file, apparently. Okay, uh, that's the problem with having too many of the same stuff open at the same time. I've got the same compiler code open in like two different folders, two or three even. So we're going to go back into uh, crash the stack, compiler uh, source module.c. We're going to go into, come on now, I don't care. Uh, resolve by name. We're going to drop this in right there, and then we're going to run it again. Okay, looking for mod module substratic graphics. I'm pretty sure that it should be there already by this point. Oh, no, it's not potentially. Hold on. Main.c. Main Terrible. Got to put that before loading main.c. There we go. Right there. That's probably going to solve the problem. Okay. So now we got a little handy address sanitizer error. What did I do wrong? Let's go take that line out from module. Okay, so read on graphics.c 656. Yeah, I told you we we're gonna have some crashing, didn't I? 656, this is why it's good to have a tool like uh, address sanitizer to uh, keep me honest. Okay, so what have we not initialized correctly so far? Window create, window, oh, well that's one problem. We need to actually create a window here. And if we go back GLFW uh, create window. What is this function? Window create. Oh, I just need to call into this function. That would make sense, wouldn't it? Probably also need to have a title parameter to the, uh, the function, but we'll worry about that in a, that in a second. Uh, where were we? It is window create MSC. All right, so here what we're going to do is call subst window graphics window create. We're gonna pass in the width and the height. And for the title, we're gonna say crash the stack because we're gonna hard code it until we make it for real. And uh, now GLFW set window size. I don't know if we need to do that. Let's leave that out for now, see what happens. Cannot create GLFW window, great. I probably haven't hit the init for that yet either. So graphics init, I need to call that function. Hmm. Graphics init. Because we need to initialize uh, GLFW like that. Was I calling it anywhere else? Graphics initialized. 
Yeah, so let's go into uh, window create. Probably not the right place to do this, but we'll have to figure out what the right API is. Um, graphics init. All right, subsystem. Then create the window. Okay, so fail to load GLX. I probably need to pull that library in, I'm guessing. Uh, does GLFW not link to it already? Let's see what I find in uh, VTerm. GLX, no package GLX found. That's kind of weird. Libs GL. I wonder if I even included that. Uh, let's go to build.sh. Did I put in LGL? Of course not. So let's uh, do this then. Package config. Libs. Uh, GL. Okay. That should be helpful. Let's go back to the compilation buffer. Okay, so that's a little bit more progress. Um, window create 123. Okay, so it is in this function. <clears throat> window. Um, hmm. Subs graphics window create 123 at window or ampersand window context screen sets oh do we not have a context is that what the problem is that window create would do that already oh is i think context is supposed to be not a pointer i think i broke that actually uh is that right I don't think I ever did a, an explicit alloc of that. Let's go into graphics for flux. Uh, render context. Let's see. Yeah, that was definitely not a pointer. So let me go into um, graphics.h here. Context. This is not a pointer. That should be um, part of the allocation. All right, so that might have moved us a little bit further. Oh, nope, same place. So graphics subst window create screen size one two we haven't even set that up yet have we context oh wait i think that's part of the problem right this is supposed to be a uh it's not a pointer Uh, where is that? Uh, 77. Oh, yeah, I think I, I did this all over the place, in fact. Uh, 123. Desired size. Yeah, okay. And then... Loop start 523. Yeah, now we need the ampersand. So that explains why that was necessary before. Okay, so a window loaded. Um, it didn't continue, didn't crash. Not sure what the deal is with that. Uh, but I think part of the problem is that I'm not actually running a loop yet. But it didn't print out the thing that I asked it to, it seems. So back in um, main.msc, I call show window. Oh, I didn't call render loop. No wonder. Okay, so let's try that. Uh, rendering, it displays once. Oh, I didn't do a recursive call either. Render loop. All right, let's see what happens. So the window stays open. Now we're just rendering, rendering, rendering until oblivion. Cool. So at least we got the window up. Where are we on our tasks? How bad did that kill the stream? 
stack overflow in regex master yeah oh my god well that at least shows you that i'm not getting stack overflows in my program uh <laughs> The, the uh, infinite looping of a recursive function is working as intended, so that's good. Let's do that one more time without the burden of, of printing. Cool, so I think we're okay. And that's not killable at the moment. Oh, okay, there we go. Cool, great. I'm happy with that. So let's go back to the, the to-do list. Uh, basic project structure, we got that done. Um, we got the window created. We got a, well, we don't have a basic game loop, loop yet, but let's try to get something going now. So we, we need to draw some things to the screen. Like, for instance, first of all, clear the screen. And also check to see if the window uh, needs to exit. So we can do some of those things uh, in our code here. So let's go back into graphics.c. And I want to take a look at what we had before in our render loop. So some of this stuff we need to break out, I think, into um, separate functions that can be called from mesh. Let's see. Window size update. We probably need that. Hmm. Because I don't want to have to like expose all this stuff to mesh, especially GL functions. That's going to be a nightmare. So we're going to have to have some nice API for that, unless I do start exposing it, which means we're going to need some uh, improved function binding capabilities to make this not a pain in the ass to write every single binding. Okay, so should close window. We're going to need that. So we can have a function for checking if the window needs to close. So um, what about a uh, window needs close P function. Window needs close P. It's a predicate. We'll also pull this value. All right. And then uh, it doesn't take any parameters. It just returns whether... Um, This function returns true or false. Now, what's the actual signature for that function? Yeah, great, it's not telling me. We're gonna treat it like a bool. So back in graphics.c, uh, needs close. Okay, so here, um, if it should close, um, let's see, we're gonna do a return the little ternary operator here, return um, tval, otherwise nilval. Cool. So that should be enough for that. I also need to fix my uh, code formatting settings here to have it be a little bit wider. Okay, so um, window needs close P. We're gonna go into graphics.h. I'm already annoyed by having to put these functions in, so to fix this later. Hey, gun. All right, so knees close P. Let's go ahead and fix that syntax. Now in uh, main, we definitely need to call a function to do this. I'm gonna have to change this code up in a second. Window needs close. Yeah, that, that's not a great name, but we'll stick with it for now. Needs close P MSC, which I did not do. Let's just grab that. We're going to go into graphics.h, uh, graphics.c. There we go. All right. So now uh, that should return that. And in main.msc, I can say um, I don't have a win yet. Hmm. If not, well, let's, let's, let's do it the other way maybe. Mm. Yeah, because I don't want to deal with that. So if um, window needs, oh, it does actually need a value because we need to pass in the window, right? Okay, so let's do that first. If windows needs closed, then we're going to just display uh, exiting. Otherwise, we're going to call a uh, render loop for now, but we're going to call some render functions uh, before that. 
we could do like a little begin here maybe I don't know if I set up oh maybe I did set up begin right I we're gonna have to see how well the uh tail call elimination works with some nested tail contacts because I have not really tested it fully yet I just got it working today okay so uh, window needs closed, window display exiting if it needs to be closed. Otherwise, uh, do the cursive render loop call. Uh, now, let's go back to graphics.c and then add that parameter fetch because we need that window right here. Object pointer. Um, window should close. Uh, subst window window equals subst window pointer pointer. Then we have... Uh, window arrow glfw window that should be enough okay so if i hit quit on that mm, that's not doing anything all right let's see any pointers there no okay if i start printing again we're gonna end up having a little bit of trouble Window should close. Oh, you know why it's not happening? It's because I have not run that uh, event loop function yet. Hmm. So I need to do this glfw poll events. Maybe that's what I should be calling instead of a uh, a window update function. To sort of update all the events for the window, and then if it returns nil, then we should bail out. We can experiment with that a little bit. Window needs close. Um, ah, it looks like. Okay, restream bot is still spamming on the uh, the chat on the screen, unfortunately. All right. Let's see here. Um, I guess I could just. It's not not ideal, but I could I could actually just sneak that in um, in the needs close for now. Not perfect, but we can do that. So GLFW poll events. Now it's funny that that doesn't actually have a uh, a window attached to it. <clears throat> okay. So um, GLFW poll events. Okay, let's just try that and see what happens. Oh, okay, so event polling is working. Cool, that works. Awesome. I'm very happy to see that um, the recursive or the tail recursion is working for looping and it doesn't seem to be crashing or <laughs> running out of stack because it's not consuming any stack. Um, wonder what the CPU usage is like right now. Uh, proc ed. Crash the stack. Uh, yeah, 90, 92%. Cool. That makes sense. All right. So we're making progress here. Um, let's get screen clearing working. So we at least have some color rendering on the screen to make it clear that uh, you know something is drawing, and then maybe we can try to get an image drawing really quickly. We got 15 minutes left. I think it's enough time. So in main.msc, let's uh, see. I'm trying to think of the right API for this. What am I calling it inside of graphics.c? I'm not calling it anything. Uh, gl color no gl clear clear color I mean I guess screen functions would make sense screen clear surface clear got to come up with my naming con <clears throat> conventions here uh, until then I can um, pull this stuff down into another function Let's just copy that. Actually, no, let's copy uh, this one because this is a little bit more robust. Okay. We need an argument count of 
Yeah, if we're gonna pass a window in, I guess it's window clear in that case. I don't like this whole window concept. I may have to change that a little bit. So window clear um, or renderer. I would maybe prefer renderer or something as a concept. But so we need the window and we need the um, the color to clear it with. And I suppose I could have a color struct or something like it that I could uh, create using a function. But for now, we can just do, um, let's see, five arguments. So five parameters, let's just say that for now. And then um, the first one's gonna be the window. So if I copy uh, this little bit here, and I can grab that first one. And then the rest, we're gonna be the RGB values. So this will be one and then uh, RG, RB, and then A. Well, no, well, we don't need alpha for window clearing, I don't think. So I, we can stick with four parameters. We're definitely going to change the naming of all this stuff. I just, you know, when you're doing things live, you don't really have time to think about what the ideal naming conventions are going to be. Okay, so now uh, window clear. We have the window already. And then we can uh, call these GL functions here that I've got pulled up. So uh, what I would do is say uh, 255.0 divided by R and then do the same thing for the other two channels. That will be B, no, that's G, and this is uh, B. All right, so that would allow us to set the clear color and then uh, clear the, the buffer. Uh, we're also gonna have to swap the, the, uh, the back buffer to the front buffer, the, the frame buffers basically. So we're gonna have to call this, what is it, GLFW swap buffers before it's going to show up on the screen. So we will also need a function for that. And we can call that um, window swap buffers. And then uh, we all we need on that one is just a pointer to the window. So we'll just go grab the window pointer one more time. And uh, we will re return true from this function, return t val. Same on this one here. We're not going to return any other object. And we will use the window pointer, window pointer to glfw window. Okay. So window swap buffers and uh, window clear. Drop those into graphics.h. So let's just delete all of this out, clean it up, swap buffers. Okay, good. Now we have these things defined and then we can uh, also add those into the registration in main.c. So we'll put these here. We will copy this uh, window clear. And then uh, window swap buffers. Okay, and then this will be clear. Oh, it, I muted my audio, great. Okay, that's enough for that. And uh, now in graphics. Oh, sorry, main.msc, I can call window clear window. Uh, let's clear it to red at first just to see what it looks like. It's going to look terrible, I'm sure. And then uh, window swap uh, buffers window. And let's make sure, let's see, I uh, clear the window. Uh, flip the buffers. Um, next frame. Let's make sure that uh, those two functions are actually taking the things we expect them to. So that's an R count four, and this one's not being checked. Whatever, let's run it. <clears throat> okay, it's clearing to a color. It's not the right color. R, 
RBG. That's backwards. G. B. And um, did I? No, it's 255, zero, zero. Okay, so R is number one, two, three. Let's print that out, actually. Um, color is, <clears throat> or maybe F. Oh, hold on. Yeah. A clear color. It's supposed to be, I wonder if clear color, GL clear color, is it zero to one? Zero to one. So that's what I'm trying to do here. Oh, I think I'm just doing it backwards. This should be the, the opposite way. <clears throat> yep. All right, so then we're going to grab this one as well. RGB. Now I think it should be uh, showing the right thing in a moment. And we don't need to do any printing here. Okay, we're we're clearing the screen red, which is exactly what I expected. Now uh, I want to pick a nicer color for this, and I actually do have, <coughs> excuse me, something somewhere for the color that I was using previously in this uh, project. So clear. Let's see if I can find the clear color that I was using for this. <clears throat> I think it's this one. Let's try that. So then in uh, main MSC, I'm going to drop in that color right there and then let's see what it looks like nice little purple color there okay good last thing we're going to try to do is uh, render a sprite of some sort hmm let's do this really really quickly so um before we get into the render loop we need to load a tile sprite let's see texture load assets slash images slash tile dot png i'm pretty sure that's the one assets images tile dot png okay now um for the sake of simplicity we'll just go ahead and jack that function into uh the graphics library but we're gonna we're gonna move things around to the proper places uh, in a minute all right so let's render the tile So now uh, we can say uh, render texture tile sprite. You need to pass in the window also because we're trying to render that context. And then uh, let's see tile sprite and then position on screen. Let's just say 100, 100. That should be sufficient. All right, so we're going to need to add the render texture and texture load functions. I, mean, I guess you could call that texture render. Texture draw. Not ideal, but let's uh, let's go with that for now. Okay, texture load, texture draw. Let's go with uh, main.c. We're going to copy these two. Texture load. Let's put them in texture. How about that? Texture load MSC. Texture draw. And then we'll go into um, crash uh, texture.c, uh, even texture.h, I would say. Graphics.h. Let me grab the signature that we need. Now we're here. Okay, so uh, subst texture load. Should probably put the file extension on that function name too, but maybe I don't need to do it for now. So then texture draw, I think that's what I said next. Copy these, go into texture.c, paste them down at the bottom. Make sure that's what I called it in the main.msc code. Texture draw, texture load. Okay, cool. So let's get to it. Uh, first of all, we need the file path. So uh, object string uh, file path equals as string um, args zero. 
and then we can return um, object val mesh. No, no, no. Yeah, mesh make pointer make mm, mesh object make pointer object make pointer. Uh, VM star. Yeah, this is just. I, I use every chance I get to complain about what I've done so far with my code. Uh, make pointer. We need the actual pointer. Let's say texture, and then um, we want it to be managed. So now we're gonna say uh, subst texture texture equals, and we have a function called uh, PNG load subst texture PNG load. We're just gonna assume it's a PNG subst subst texture PNG load. We're gonna give it the file path, the actual C string of the file path, which is the cares property here. And that should make that work. Next, we need to draw it. So I need to remember how I was drawing things before. Let's go back into graphics.c, uh, texture. And um, subst texture. I was drawing the logo. So I had subst texture PNG load. And then right around here, I was drawing the texture. So we'll pick that up. And we need to pull in, ooh, okay. That probably needs to be in the other file. Yeah, we need to rethink that a little bit. So, whoops, I'm gonna go ahead and put this in the um, graphics.c file at the bottom. And uh, we will move that one function over to graphics.h. We will still call it texture for now because I just want to get the job done really quick. Graphics I see. Um, draw args. Args. Where were we initializing those? Because I realized recently that not initializing them leads to problems. So draw args dot uh, flags equals zero draw draw okay this flags is probably enough because nothing else gets used args dot shader program everything okay so let's go with that um we have draw args and we need our x and y position and also the texture so i think we render context okay yeah we need the window so we will pull a few things similarly to what we did here. I'm gonna pull this out, we're gonna get the window, we're gonna get the uh, X position and the Y position. So that's window one, two, I think we also need the texture. So I think I, what I might do here is just sort of simplify this pattern, subst texture, texture subs texture as pointer args one this is going to be two and three here is texture here is uh window dot context and then draw args and then we're going to return T val. Okay, so that should be enough to get that working. Looks good. All right, so now texture draw MSC. Can we just run it and see what happens? Okay. Uh, text subs texture load MSC sub texture draw. No. What about uh, texture dot H? Oh, I need to go into uh, main.c and pull in include crash slash texture.h now. Uh, Window.context. Window is a pointer. You're right. So graphics.c, uh, window right there. And this probably needs to be an ampersand also. Okay, here we go. Ah, crash. 
Uh, P decoding PNG file data output buffer too small. What did I do wrong? Uh, Louis says, is that not what a programmer does every time? Complain about all the code done before? Yeah, I mean, but usually it's when you're complaining about somebody else's code. In my case, I'm complaining about my own. All right, so we're almost there. We're almost there. I mean, we, I think we're going to accomplish the goal. I just got to figure out why the PNG loader is unhappy. Uh, let's see, texture.c, 71, GL text image 2D. What is happening here? Image bytes. Error decoding PNG file data output buffer too small. Okay, so what output buffer? Okay, we have image bytes here. I wonder if something's wrong with this PNG file or if it found the wrong thing. Um, hmm. Wouldn't it give us some other problem if we weren't able to open the file? File open. Mm. Not checking anything there. So is this a file uh, FP mm. equals F open? Print F. Okay, so if FP equals null. I'll say panic here. Actually, panic problem opening file S. File name. And then return FP. Let's see if there's anything going on there. Okay, so didn't say anything about opening the file. Um, let's go back to texture.c. So we opened the file, we created the new SPNG context. Uh, could not create SPNG context. Okay, so it didn't give us that error. Junk limits, set PNG file, get I header. We're doing all kinds of error checking here. And so far we're not seeing anything giving us an error. Uh, until right here. So SPNG to code image. Ah, I wonder what format that image is in. Hmm. Interesting. Let's see if I open it up in the GIMP. Uh, GNU image and manipulation program. I don't know what it'd be able to tell me, but let's open that up anyway and see what happens. So we'll go to uh, projects, code, crash stack, assets, images, tile. Indexed alpha, it says. I don't really know the right way to get the details. Image properties. Okay, so it's indexed, which is different than what I am loading it as. I'm loading it as a, uh, let's see. Um, tile two, let's go tile two. Automatic pixel format, let's go uh, eight BPC RGBA, because I think that's what I'm expecting it to be. All right, so now let's try to load up that um, tile two file with main.msc and see if that works any better. I got a feeling it will. Okay, different thing this time, I think, maybe. Okay, yeah, definitely different thing this time because I got way more errors. Undefined variable texture draw. Come on now. Uh, did I not set that up right? Texture, oh yeah. Texture draw. We might be getting there. Texture draw. Okay, I don't see it on the screen. Hmm, let's think. Okay, the, we do have the right image size. 33 by 39 is very small. Oh, and I closed this, and we got a lot of memory leaks, so I probably need to check up on some stuff in the uh, garbage collector. Ah, uh, the, the memory allocated by SPNG is, is getting uh, complained about, so I'll have to go fix that uh, later. That's okay. Okay, 
last last attempt to try to get this to work. Let me double check everything I've done so far. So window tile sprite, uh, 100 by 100. Let's say 500 just to make sure that we're showing up on screen or zero zero. And then um, I could try to set the scale to see if it renders any bigger, but it probably draws centered by default too. Mm. Yeah, let's let's go with 300 by 300 just in case. And I'll double check that I'm actually calling the function I expect to be calling. Draw texture EX, window context texture. Oh, that explains it. X, Y. It's not where it needs to be. Okay, let's go. Not drawing. Uh, let's see. Did I do anything wrong? I'm drawing it before swapping buffers, which is good. 300, 300. We'll go back to 100 maybe. I wonder if I can adjust the scale. Um, so let's say subst graphics um, scale, args scale, draw args. And then we're going to do a scale of two on both dimensions. Okay. Oh, I messed that up. Shouldn't be setting that zero right there. Very, very interesting that's not showing up. Let me open that image um, to make sure that the image data is correct. Seems fine. Okay. Window con <coughs> context, uh, texture. Am I pulling the texture correctly? Yeah, one pointer. Should be fine. Doesn't complain. Uh, draw texture EX. Oh, the shader program. I wonder if that has something to do with it too. Shader program, default shader program equals zero. Shader files, texture vertex of fragment shader. That seems right. Is there anything I'm missing? There must be something I'm missing from a projection context. I wonder if that's what it is. Okay. Frame buffer. Window size update. Window size callback. That's being added in window create, so it should be working. Now the projection matrix, screen matrix. We're setting GL ortho here for the window width and window height. And we do see that it does tell us it is updating the window width and window height. Hmm. That's really weird. Okay. Well, we may be not getting it to work right now. It's going to be another one of these things where I'm going to figure it out like, you know, in 20 minutes after the stream's over. So let's just do one last little shot here and uh, bump that scale up a little more in graphics.c. We're going to bump it up to three. I don't know. It's not really going to help, probably. Window context, uh, texture, x, y, draw args. Yeah, that's just that's disappointing that it doesn't show. It's going to show, though. It's going to work. It's just not working right now. <laughs> well, at any rate, I feel like we did a good job of getting uh, the basics working as intended. Uh, the OpenGL window is, is showing. We are rendering a color to the screen. We have the ability to load a texture. It's just not rendering yet. And um, in the next stream, next week on Tuesday, we're going to start actually uh, drawing stuff on screen with the purpose of, you know, putting together some game logic. And I'm going to try to spend a little time thinking about what I need from the language to enable that. Because right now, I mean, it's working pretty well to have this recursive render loop, but we need a little bit more um, abstraction. We need to be able to, to come up with functions for, you know, rendering certain things and, you know, to build a little bit more of this uh, API out. So uh, by next time, I'll probably have changed some of this stuff, but I'll tell you all the stuff that I changed anyway. Um, so I think that's it for today. 
Yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah. Louis says, uh, now I'd like to see that appearing on the window. Yeah, me too. But next time, we'll, we'll have it working next time for sure. Um, anyway, thanks everybody for being here today. I really appreciate it. Um, I'll have the code checked into the repo in just a moment or maybe a little bit later. Depends on how much time I have that, so you can take a look at that. And then uh, until next Tuesday, uh, keep it creative and we'll see you. Thanks a lot for, thanks a lot for joining.